I'm Ludovico Stevens. I'm technical marketing engineer and I specialize on the Extremes fabric solution. And what we're showing here at this demo stand today is the latest integration of our fabric with, SD, with our own SD-WAN. What we have here is our SD-WAN cloud orchestration. And what we're showing here is an SD-WAN deployment, which is using our CTC labs worldwide. Um, so it's based on, we have a CTC lab in Reading, which is our hub location. We have a CTC lab in Singapore, which is a spoke location. And we have a couple of locations in the US, which are also spoke locations. Uh, we have a location in France, which is where our SD-WAN development uh, is happening. And uniquely here in Berlin, we've got an SD-WAN appliance and a fabric switch, which is basically this other location, which is shown on the map here. So all locations have an SD-WAN appliance and a fabric switch behind them. Um, here in Berlin, we have a small SD-WAN appliance. Um, in Reading, we have a bigger SD-WAN appliance that determines the, the, the throughput and capability of the appliance. But essentially, uh, what we're doing here is the SD-WAN will automatically build IPsec tunnels from the spoke sites to the hub sites. So that gives us the SD-WAN deployment, and that's what's represented on, on this map here. We can, of course, also have spoke-to-spoke -spoke IPsec tunnels if you want. That's also possible. But the nice thing of the integration with Fabric with SD-WAN is that um, if there's a fabric switch uh, behind the SD-WAN appliances and we've enabled fabric support on the SD-WAN orchestration, then the SD-WAN will automatically instruct the fabric switches to build a fabric overlay which will match the IPsec underlay. And so we, we, we neatly integrate fabric uh, and SD-WAN. So this, this demo here is, is basically, uh, what I can show in this demo here is um, uh, the benefits of this integration and the automation of it. So what we typically do here is uh, I have my laptop here, which is connected to my fabric switch. And my fabric switch is connected to my appliance here. And my appliance has the internet WAN connection. I can factory default this switch. And it takes a couple of minutes. But uh, the nice thing is that when this switch comes back, you'll see that it will rejoin the fabric automatically. I don't have to configure anything. The whole solution basically is zero touch. So if I'm deploying a new site, so if, if we're a new site here in this deployment in, in Berlin, the deployment for me is I would deploy both the appliance and the fabric switch and they would automatically configure themselves without me having to do, I wouldn't have to do anything via the serial port. There's no manual configuration. It's all zero touch. So this laptop here has got, I do have a serial port into the switch, but not because I'm going to configure stuff. It's just to see what happens when the switch comes up. And I also am receiving here a little video stream. And this video stream comes from the Reading Hub location. So uh, when I factory default this switch, you'll see the video will stop. And then we're going to have to wait a few minutes to see uh, before it, it, it resumes automatically. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll re uh, because it takes a few minutes, I'll, I'll go and, and, and reboot the switch. So this screen here represents my local laptop here in Berlin. And this screen here is my orchestration, which is, which is accessing the resourcing from Reading. So from Reading, I can, I can SSH uh, into my fabric switch in Reading. And I can see here that I've got a number of fabric uh, adjacencies to all the remote sites. So this is my hub site, and I have an adjacency to this switch here in Berlin, and I have adjacencies to Singapore, France, and, and, and the US. And I can also SSH from Reading, I can SSH into this switch here in Berlin. And what I'm gonna do here is, I'm gonna do the necessary commands, if I can recall them. So I'm gonna do these commands here, which are gonna factory default my switch. So it's basically a factory default my switch and I reset it. And what you'll see is that the video here is frozen because I've lost connectivity. And the serial port here is showing me that the switch is now rebooting. I've lost links on my ports because this fabric switch is now down. And so this is going to take now a couple of minutes to come back. But what we, in the meantime, what we can do is we can go in back. If I go back to the reading switch, you'll see here that the one which was highlighted in red, that adjacency has gone away because I've, I've killed the switch. So as far as we're concerned, the fabric basically doesn't see the site any longer. Now, the, another nice thing of our fabric and SD-WAN integration is that the SD-WAN is aware of the status of the fabric and the fabric is aware of the status of the SD-WAN. They exchange information. How do we activate this fabric support? It's actually very, very simple. It's just a, sim a simple uh, a knob that you turn on globally. You just basically enable fabric support. You enable this knob here and you only need to provide a range of IP address spacing. So essentially the fabric support tells the fabric switches to build a VXLAN, uh, an overlay of VXLAN tunnels for fabric extend tunnels. Uh, VXLAN needs some address space. So the SD-WAN orchestration basically 
you give it a, a range of addresses and it will carve out uh, slash 29 subnets to allocate to every site. So you don't have to even bother to configure IP addresses for those VXLAN tunnels. So that's how you configure it. But there's also uh, monitoring of fabric information. So let's just take a look at our various uh, appliances across the deployment. So you can see here that these are all the appliances for all the sites we have. And there's, a, there's information about fabric support in every site. And you can see here that this one here is in, inactive because I killed the switch, yeah? Um, so let's just take a look perhaps at, uh, at, at the Reading one, which is going to be more interesting. So if I go into the Reading one, it will give me information about the appliance which I have back in Reading. So I can see here information about the Reading appliance, the software I'm running, what type of appliance I have there. It's a bigger appliance I have in Reading. It's my hub site. And it tells me about the fabric support in Reading. So in Reading, that appliance is connected to a 5720 switch, which has this name, uh, which has, is active. And I actually get to see the status, the, the ISIS fabric status for that fabric switch in Reading. So that fabric switch in Reading has got right now three ISIS adjacencies, which are the ones that we see here. Yeah, One was already down and the one to this switch here is down because we killed, we killed the switch. Yeah, So this is nice because it shows that the SC1 is actually getting information from the fabric status. But it actually goes both ways. And you can see that if you go under advanced troubleshooting of the SD1 appliance, you can get a lot more information, operational information from that appliance, like things like uh, memory utilization, CPU utilization, etc. So this graph will refresh uh, briefly here. But if you go, if you go under routing and LLDP, uh, you actually get to see the information that the appliance exchanges with the switch. So we've got two, two tables here, this is LLDP. So the SD1 appliance learns from the switch, the name of the switch, the interface with the LAN1 interface of the appliance, the MAC address, and it learns from the switch the status of the ISIS adjacencies. So this is the one that we just killed, which is now down, yeah? And likewise, the appliance tells the fabric switch about the status of its SD1 IPsec tunnels. So our fabric overlay, if there are some SD1 underlay IPsec tunnels which fail, our fabric can automatically reroute much faster. So in the meantime, our fabric switch is progressing through its boot cycle. And right now, it's, uh, we're getting close. So I don't know if you can zoom into the, uh, the serial port here, but it's, um, uh, at some point, we're going to see some messages and we will see some ISI suggestions come up magically because I haven't configured them. Uh, <laughs> So right now we see that uh, LLDP adjacent to port 124, which is where the appliance is connected. The switch right now is trying to, is running IQ agent to connect into XIQ. Okay, fair enough. We see the cold start trap. It'll just be a few moments and we should start seeing ISS suggestions come up. And the nice thing of this is that it's not just um, uh, auto configuring the fabric over the SD1, but all the other common uh, pr um, onboarding processes like zero touch fabric, and ZTP Plus onboarding into XIQ site engine and IQ agent onboarding into cloud, they will all work as if this switch was locally connected to a local fabric. So the fact that we're running over SD1 doesn't change anything to that. So you see here some messages, adjacency up. And look at the video, the video started on its own. Basically the switch is back in operation and we did absolutely nothing to configure it. And there's quite substantial configuration which was pushed to the device. So if you have time, I can take you through and see what that configuration is. Um, so what we can do is uh, we can go back to the SSH session here. This is the session where I had factory defaulted the switch. Uh, in the meantime, the switch will have also got a, a DHCP IP address from Reading. So I should be able to SSH back into the same switch again. I can, but I defaulted the switch. So it's pushing me. I need a new SSH key. I need to accept that key to connect via SSH. And I just have to bear with me to, to, to reconnect. So it's, it's a factory defaulted switch, so I need to confirm what the default passwords are gonna be for this switch. And there we go. So I'm back on the same switch as before. And what we'll just look at is we'll look at the LLDP neighbor of this switch. So we can see that it has an LLDP neighbor on port 24. That is my SD1 appliance. And if you are uh, interested in the nitty gritty details, which I usually am, uh, we can actually go and look at the uh, LDP neighbor, the detail information that we're getting on that port 124. So you actually get to see what um, what the uh, the SD1 appliance, what information the SD1 appliance is pushing to the switch. It's basically telling the switch, use this IP address. This is your default gateway, 
and you need to build VXLAN tunnels to this destination. And I've only got one destination here, but I, it could actually provide me multiple tunnel destinations. So the switch will take this information, and what it does is it creates the VRF dynamically, which is called AutoSense FE, it's VRF1. In this VRF, it's going to create the IP address it was told to create. In the routing table of this VRF, it will create a default route to the gateway, which is the sd wine appliance. And then it will build a VXLAN tunnel for Fabric Extend to the Reading, to the IP address of the uh, Fabric switch behind the appliance in Reading. And in this tunnel, it basically runs ISIS. Now, the beauty of this is I didn't have to configure any of this, which is quite a lot of configuration if you had to do it manually. And to prove that, I will look at the running config for ISIS, and you'll see that there is basically nothing because it's all dynamically derived. So that's it. The, the only thing that I, I like to do in the switch is I like, to, I like to rename it to the name it had before, which is this one. So I'll just rename it to Branch Connect 5320 because that's the name that we want to show. Uh, and if you go back here, so the name has been changed. And actually, we forgot to go back here. So this is where we were seeing the information. So if I refresh this information, so this is the appliance in Reading. And if we see the information that it's getting from the fabric switch behind it, we see that the, the tunnel to this switch here is back up and running. So if we come out of this and we look at the five peers, we see here the information. So this is the fabric switch behind the appliance in Reading now sees that the adjacencies are back up. And so that's that's the really nice thing of it is this the, the automation um, and the, the beauty of this is that yeah the, the switch will then can then onboard to XIQ site engine. So the SD WAN will will give you visibility of the fabric switches going over SD WAN. But if you need to manage the wider fabric, so for example in Reading we have a wider fabric which goes behind it, then you would be using XIQ uh, site engine for that fabric management as before, uh, and you can have this visibility as well of the fabric switches. We've, we've just covered here in this demo the, uh, the automation and orchestration benefits, so you don't have to bo bother about configuring your fabric switches to run over sd wan But the really huge benefits of this integration are elsewhere, and that's around the application visibility that we now have. The sd wan is able to see what applications are running over, over the sd wan and we didn't have that before. Uh, before we were able to do Fabric Extend, but we had no visibility of what applications were going over that fabric extend infrastructure. And we had no way of forcing our critical applications to have a, bet a better treatment than lower critical applications. Whereas now basically, uh, while well, SD-WAN has visibility of those applications and it allows us to categorize them and give them certain criticality so that we can ensure that if the WAN bandwidth of our WAN ports starts to saturate, the SD-WAN will automatically slow down the less critical applications so that you can ensure that the high critical applications which are important to your business keep running as before. We have many customers out there using Fabric and a lot of them have requirements to extend it over the WAN and they will love this uh, because they really appreciate the benefits of Fabric and they can combine those benefits now with the SD-WAN benefits. And on the other side you have customers who um, maybe need SD-WAN and um, you can, they can do SD-WAN from many other vendors out there, but I don't think they can extend fabrics with, with those other solutions. And what our SD-WAN can uniquely do is, is basically, uh, it's an SD-WAN which allows you to extend your fabric end-to-end. -end. And I think we are the only vendor in the marketplace who can do that today. Our fabric gives us a very rich set of services. If they need to stretch a VLAN across sites, we can do it with fabric. If they have different routing domains like IPVPN or what we call layer three VSNs, then extending the fabric is, is huge because you can extend the presence of those layer three domains to, to branch sites. And another huge benefit is IP multicast. There's loads of customers out there who might want to use IP multicast. And I think we're probably the only SD-WAN, we're the only vendor who can offer SD-WAN now, which can allow you to run fabric, uh, IP multicast, simply because we can extend the fabric end to end over the SD-WAN. I don't think any other vendor out there can do IP multicast over SD-WAN. So you have to go and look for these, these, these fabric benefits and combine them with the SD-WAN and then we really have a unique, unique offering here.